In this video, you're going to learn how to graph quadratic inequalities, and we're going to be graphing systems, which means we involve two or more of these quadratic inequalities. We're going to go through two examples together, so let's dive into the first example. Now, when you're graphing these uh, quadratic inequalities, these are parabolas, and remember there's three different forms here that we can work with. We can work with this general form here, the vertex form, and the intercept form, and we'll talk about that as we go through this lesson. So you can see this first inequality is in the vertex form, and we can see that our vertex is at h comma k. Remember that the number here that's grouped with the x, it has the opposite effect on the graph. So minus 2 means it's actually going to shift it to the right 2. The plus 4, that has the same effect. It's going to shift it up 4. So if we go right 2, up 4, that's our vertex, and that's where the graph bends. Now notice that the a value is negative 1. So that negative means that it's going to be opening downward like this. And notice we have less than or equal to. If it's equal to, it's going to be a solid line. If it's less than or greater than but not equal to, then it's going to be a dashed or a dotted line. So here we have equal to, it's going to be solid. What you can do though is that, remember, parabolas, they're symmetric about that vertex, about that uh, axis of symmetry, that line that goes through the vertex. So by picking some points on either side, we can get a good sketch of our graph. So for example, if I put uh, 1 in, 1 minus 2 is negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1, times a negative is negative 1, plus 4 is 3. So that means we're going to have a point right here, and if I reflect that over the axis of symmetry, we have another point there. If I put 0 in, I get negative 2 squared is 4, times a negative is negative 4, plus 4 is 0, and I can reflect that over that line of symmetry here at x equals 2, and you can keep doing that, getting some more points, but here you can see our graph's going to look something like this. And now the question is, is it's an inequality. Where do we shade? Do we shade on this part of the plane or on this other side of that graph above the parabola? Well, you can do this two different ways. When it's less than, you can think about shading below. And that only works if the y is by itself here on the left, like the y values are less than. That means like y controls the vertical direction up and down. So less than means below. So I could just say if I pick a point here on the graph and I shade below, 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 you can see that's going to be basically uh, on the inside here of this parabola. Some students don't like that method. They like to use what they call the test point method. And you could pick a point, say for example I pick the point uh, 1, 1 right here. If I plug 1 in for x and 1 in for y, let's do that right now. We're going to put a little question mark here. Uh, negative 1 minus 2 is going to be uh, negative 1. Okay, now let's see if this is true. We get 1, negative 1 plus 4 is 3. So is 1 less than or equal to 3? Yes, that's true. So that test point, 1, 1, since that was true, that's the side of the graph that we want to shade. If it's false, we would shade on the other side. So I kind of like to just think of y is by itself, less than is below, and greater than is above, but you can use this test point method. So for here, you can see we're going to be graphing something like this. We'll just draw some lines here. We're on that part of the graph. For the second quadratic here, you can see this is in the basically in this general form right here. And the b value, the number in front of the x, that's 0 since we don't have an x term. So you can use the formula if you want negative b over 2a. In this case, b is 0, so we would say 0 over 2 times 1 half, which is still 0. So that means the x-coordinate of our vertex is going to be 0. If we plug that back in, you can see that y is going to be negative 2. So our vertex is at 0, negative 2, which is right here. And again, remember parabolas, they're symmetric about that, that line of symmetry that goes right through the vertex. So if I was to pick some other points, like say for example, if I was to pick maybe like uh, negative 2. A negative 2 squared is 4, times a half is 2, minus 2 is 0. So right here I would be at 0, and if I reflect that over, right there is another one. Now I can pick some more points, but let's just uh, notice that this is greater than but not equal to, so this is going to be a dashed or dotted line. If it was equal to, then it would be solid. Okay, and then now notice that the y over here is on the left. y values are greater than this. Greater than means it's above. Now, if it was less than, it would be shading below. Sometimes what I like to do, if I know I'm on this side here of this parabola, I like to draw the lines so that when you see the overlapping region, it's like a cross-hatched uh, type region. You can see here they're like double overlapped. So then I would go back and I would darken this region in. Okay, so it's basically right 
here is where they're, they're overlapping. And you can use colored pencils and so, you know, that sometimes helps yellow and blue, you know, makes green or, uh, you know, whatever you choose, but sometimes making one of them vertical, one of them horizontal, you can see where they're cross hatched. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, let's dive into example number two now. We've got the first uh, quadratic inequality. Notice that this is in the intercept form. See how it's like factored? So when it's in this intercept or factored form, by setting these uh, factors equal to zero, we can find the x-intercepts. So if I set x plus three equal to zero, we're gonna get x equals negative three is our x-intercept. And if we set x minus one equal to zero, we're gonna get x equals one is our x-intercept. Now, knowing that parabolas are symmetric, what we can do is we can find the midpoint between these two x-intercepts. So you could do that either by just adding them together and dividing by two, kind of like your midpoint formula or like an average. That's gonna come out to two over two, which is equal to one. Uh, sorry, negative one. <laughs> okay, so then what that means is that negative one, that's our axis of symmetry. The vertex lies on that axis of symmetry. So if we take the negative one, we put it back in for x, we can get the corresponding y-coordinate of the vertex. So let's do that. Negative one plus three is two. Negative one minus one is negative two. And you can see this comes out to negative eight. So our vertex is gonna be here at negative one, negative eight, which is right about there. So you can see we have a pretty good sketch already. So this is equal to, so it's gonna be a solid line. If it was less than or greater than, but not equal to, it would be a dotted. Now, if I wanna find out where it crosses the, the y-axis, I could put zero in for x. That's gonna come out to negative six. So it's gonna cross right here and get a little bit better sketch, right? Okay, so you can see that's our parabola. And notice that y is less than or equal to, which means we're shading below this parabola, right? Or if you don't like that method, you could do the test point. A good test point is the origin, zero, zero. If I put zero in for x and zero in for y, let's see what we get. We get, I'll just put a little question mark here. This comes out to three. And this comes out to negative one. And you can see, is zero less than or equal to negative six? Well, uh, no, zero is actually greater than all the negative numbers. So where this origin point is zero, zero is false. You'd want to shade on the other side of the parabola, which coincides with what we talked about earlier, less than we're shading below. So let's just go ahead and do that. I'm going to, I'm going to just draw a line straight down like that. Less than we think about the Y controlling the vertical direction up and down. Less than is below. This is just one way to, to do it. And then if we look at the second quadratic uh, inequality, uh, you can see that this is in the general form, this ax squared plus bx plus c form. And we can use our negative b over 2a to find that axis of symmetry and the x-coordinate of the vertex. And that's going to be the opposite of negative 4, which is 4, over 2 times a, which is 1. So we have 4 over 2, which is 2. Now, if you put 2 back in, we get 4 minus 8, which is negative 4, minus 2, which is negative 6. So that's our vertex here at two, negative six, right about here. That's our axis of symmetry. And we can pick some points on either side. So for example, if I was to put in a, a one, that would give us one minus four is negative three, minus two is negative five. And I can reflect that. And if I put in zero, I get negative two. And I can reflect that. And notice this is greater than but not equal to, which means this is a dashed or a dotted line. So I'm just going to kind of uh, eye this here a little bit. Now, again, you can plot more points to be a little bit more accurate, okay? Um, now, notice this graph, y is greater than. Greater than means we're shading above, right? So that means if I pick this point, above, above, above. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw these lines horizontally so that I can hopefully uh, illustrate for us a little bit cl more clearly since we're just using black, <laughs> a black pen, pen or marker here. So we can see where they overlap. So do you see where it's like cross hashed? How do you say that? Hatched or hashed? Hashed, right? So basically it looks like they're, um, they're double overlapped right in this region right here. So if we were to go back and darken this, it's like that. So basically you're below the one parabola, above the other parabola, you're looking at where they overlap and it's gonna be right in that region. So, Great job if you're able to follow these 
couple examples here. If you want more practice, I'll put a video right there talking more about how to graph these quadratic inequalities. Follow me over there and test yourself. Get some more practice. I'll see you over in that video.